Hello, I'm Sue Romanoff from Edison Group. Today I'm joined by two important individuals from Erlab, CEO and previously longstanding chairman, Dr. Gunnar Olson and Dr. Nicholas Water, um, head of R&D. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sue. Great. Nice to um, so we, we have a few questions here. Uh, we saw some positive key secondary efficacy endpoints from the latest phase two B mesopotam study in Parkinson's disease, levodopa-induced dyskinesia. Can you provide the significance of these encouraging results and the anticipated next steps? Yeah, um, <clears throat> we just recently uh, announced the top-line results from this phase 2B study, a study we've been working on for a couple of years now. Uh, uh, and um, the, uh, the interesting thing with this, uh, the results from the study is that we, we see a clear and, and a highly significant effect on uh, UDIS RS, which is the uh, preferred scale, the regulatory preferred scale for assessing uh, dyskinesia. Uh, and that goes across doses and across uh, the study, all the patients. So that, that really looks really fine. That combined with uh, what we discovered in this trial, a uh, 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 dose dependent reduction in off, uh, combined with uh, no change in uh, motor function as, as defined by UPDRS, the, the classical Parkinson disease rating scale, uh, is really compelling. Um, we also uh, uh, failed on the uh, primary endpoint that was based on uh, diaries, diary data, house or diaries. Uh, however, uh, we do see, uh, as we do with the rest of the um, uh, data, those dependent uh, activity in all the scales that we've used, which is uh, mainly the, the, the main uh, objective of a phase two program is to actually define those dependence and the best dose. So when we've finally, uh, we are in the, in the midst of analyzing the data uh, right now, and we hope to be able to uh, share much more of the results of this trial during the spring uh, this year. Uh, but uh, we can clearly say now that we have defined the, the right dose for further development of this uh, asset. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe um, we can... Can you give me some more background on the UDRS measure and then the dose-dependent de considerations and, and maybe the potential advantages of mesdopatam? Um, the scale as such was uh, developed uh, a few years back uh, as a response to the lack of uh, useful tools to assess uh, on-phase dyskinesia in Parkinson's disease. Uh, uh, and there has been a lot of uh, uh, validation studies published, validation data uh, published. It's been quite thorough work around the study, uh, the, the scale, sorry. Uh, and uh, it has been uh, used in many uh, studies uh, addressing dyskinesia in PD. Uh, and we all know that uh, amantadine or the, um, the, the, the long half-life version of amantarine recovery is, is approved in the US. And that was the, the first approval was based on the UDSR scale. So this is a scale which the regulators have previously uh, put very much weight on in terms of uh, antidiskinetic uh, properties of a compound. And if I, I just add another aspect, and that is this thing about those response pattern, uh, the best way to really be sure that an observed effect is there. That, that is to see a dose response pattern. And what that is, that is that if you give a small dose, you see a small effect. If you increase the dose a little bit, you see more effect. And if you continue to increase dose even more, you see an even more effect. And this is why, if you ask me, uh, this is why I'm so optimistic uh, towards this data. Uh, that, that this represents a, a clear ef efficacy signal and uh, we could exclude that this is a chance finding, which is always difficult when you only have one dose and you have different uh, effects in different endpoints. Could you provide us with an update on the ongoing phase 2b study of Purpamat in Parkinson's related falls? 
Sure. Um, it's a study we initiated uh, uh, last year, uh, or the year before actually last year, uh, around, around year end 21, uh, and uh, initiated during the spring of 22. Uh, we have at this time, we have all the uh, sites uh, pinpointed around Europe. Uh, we are almost in the situation where we have uh, activated all sites. It takes time to activate all sites in the trial. This trial contains around, around 40 sites, actually 39 sites uh, across Europe. Uh, and we are seeing a quite uh, substantial pickup now in the speed of, of recruitment. Uh, we are also looking at expanding into additional uh, countries in Europe with the trial uh, during uh, the spring and summer, which means that the current projections indicate that we will have recruited all the patients uh, supposed to go into this trial uh, uh, by the fall uh, this year, uh, which also in, uh, means that we will have uh, top line data sometime uh, during the spring of uh, 24. So I believe IRL 942 and IRL 757 are anticipated to be in phase one ready by the end of 2023 and first half of 24. Could you provide more details on your progress? Yeah, uh, these are two preclinical programs uh, addressing uh, 757, addressing apathy in neurological disorder. We, of course, have a focus on PD uh, in-house. And then uh, 942 for cognitive deficits in, in uh, neurological disorders. The two novel types of mechanisms of actions, two novel profiles, pharmacological profiles. Uh, and we, we are in the middle of preclinical development with these two assets right now. Um, and uh, we uh, try to inform uh, about things we know. Uh, and uh, we know, uh, since we have these processes ongoing now, the uh, safety, toxicology, and CMC development activities, we know that by the end of the year, we will have finalized those with 757. Uh, on top of that, uh, we need to uh, negotiate with CROs to find slots for uh, phase one uh, studies. Uh, so we cannot exactly say when that will be, but uh, be sure that that's, that work is ongoing. And uh, when we know uh, when we have a slot, we will inform. Same, same goes for 942. So, so what should investors look for in the next 12 to 18 months? I, I think uh, first, if we take them one by one, the, the uh, uh, projects with Mr. Topiton, I think that uh, one should wait to see the full data set after the in-depth evaluation of the study. Uh, and then, of course, after that, uh, I think uh, the decision by Ibsen on uh, uh, the phase three initiation is also a key event. Uh, the recruitment in Pirepmat uh, is uh, also a key uh, thing to follow. And for the early projects, I think it, as we discussed, it's the progress now to get them phase one ready. Um, as soon as we know slot times for CROs, um, uh, the, the start of phase ones. Great. Thank you, Gunnar and Nicholas, for taking the time to help me understand your efforts better. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here today. If you'd like to learn more about Erlab, please refer to edisongroup.com. Thank you.